data frames and data series are labeled tabular data structures, which are ideal for storage of many different types of data. In this video, I'll show some examples of how you can create a new data series as well as a new data frame, how you can fill in a data frame with values, as well as how you can import existing data into a data frame. We'll begin with making a new data series. A data series is a one-dimensional sequence of data which has a label associated to each data point. If we make a new data series using the data series command, you'll see here that each one of these values have a corresponding label. So here we have the label 1, which corresponds to the value 1, label 2, which corresponds to the value 3, and so on. I can make a new data series, we'll call this ds, using the data series command. And prov we'll provide a similar list here, so 2, 4, 6, 8. And we'll give this some custom labels using the labels option, a, b, c, and d. So in this data series, the labels a, b, c, and d correspond to the values 2, 4, 6, and 8 respectively. Now a data series is unique in that we can index into a data series not only using a numeric value, but using a label. So here we can use ds of a or ds of 1 to pull out the same value from a data series. A data frame is a two-dimensional rectangular table of data where the labels correspond to the columns as well as rows. So here we can create a new data frame and you'll see that the column names in this case just correspond to the numeric index. So here's column 1, column 2, row 1, and row 2. But we can also make a new data frame, we'll call this df, using the data frame command, and we'll supply the same list as before, and then we'll use the columns option in order to declare the column names to be odd and even for the first and second columns respectively. Similar to the data series, we can index into the data frame using the numeric values. Here we'll just use data frame 1 to return the first column. But we can also index in using the named label odd in order to return that same first column. Data frames can store many different types of data. For example, we can fill it with properties on berries. So here we have the energy levels. These are integers. Here we have the genus stored as strings. Carbohydrates as a floating point value total tons, including a undefined value, top producer, these are all names of countries. And we can put all this together into a data frame, and we can optionally specify the column names as well as row names. So this is a data frame in Maple. Here we can again see the column labels as well as row labels. As I mentioned before, it's also important to notice that each one of these independent columns are of different data types. So here we have strings, here we have integers, here we have floats, here we have names. As we saw before, you can index into a data frame and pull out a data series just using the column names. So here I'll pull out the carbohydrates column, and this returns to us a data series. Here we again have labels corresponding to values. So we can see that the value for raspberry of carbohydrates is 11.94. Now an interesting property of data series is that you can test them. So if we were to do something like bury data, and we'll look at energy levels, for example. So let's look at energy levels, and let's test this, these values. And we want to see, we want to do a true-false test to see which one of these values is greater than the value 200. So this returns to us a data series, but it returns to us a data series which contains true and false entries. So if we go up here, we can actually see this because it's a very small data frame. We can see that in this case, this would be true, this would be true, this would be false, and this would be false. So this corresponds to the data series we get returned from this query. Now if we take this query, we can use this to index back into our data frame. So if I use this inside of these square brackets here, what we'll actually get back is a filtered data frame which returns just the rows corresponding to this query. So this is really handy and this is a smaller example but you can see how this would scale into much larger examples where you would want to pull out certain rows that meet a criteria. So let's extend this example. I'm going to borrow this from above and let's add in an AND statement and we'll do bury data 
and we'll say look at the carbohydrate levels and we'll say where energy is greater than 200 and carbohydrates are less than tilde of 15. So this will return one row to us. It returns raspberry. And this is the only row that meets this certain given criteria. And this is one of the really strong benefits to using the data frame for your data storage. As you're able to query in and very quickly return reports on which observations meet a certain given criteria. In my final example, I want to show you how easy it is to import data into a data frame. So say if you have a CSV file that contains column and row labels. By default, the import command will import this as a new data frame. So in this case, we have a data set which is called iris.csv stored in Maple's data directory. But you can extend this, you can use this for any one of your files as well. So this specific file, this is a data set which records measurements on four properties of three subspecies of the iris. Now, the data frame is it's a rich container for information, but we also want to be able to work with it in some way. Now, a lot of what we can do is using the statistics package in Maple. So there's a lot of commands we can run on this. So say, for example, we can do a data summary on our iris data and I'll just index into the first four numeric columns and this will return a summary for these four columns. Now this is an interesting way to look at our data but we can also access this through clickable means if we right click on our data frame choose summary and tabulation and perform a data summary. This gives us a column selector and here we can select to say just return the properties for the first two columns as well, we can control the display of this to be returned as an embedded table. So here we can see is our embedded table of the seven summary statistics. And we can quickly pick out here that for the sepal length that the mean is 5.84. Now, as I mentioned before, species actually has three levels. So the mean here is spread across these three levels. So there are additional commands inside of the statistics package as well as commands which are applicable to data frames which let us have a little bit more insight into this data. And one such command is the aggregate command. So if I choose to go down here to quantities and aggregate by column and we'll choose species because we know there's three levels in species and let's return the same summary statistic. We'll just return the mean. This performs aggregate statistics on our data frame and we can see for each one of the species, so these are the three species here, these are the individual means. So this tells us a little bit more of the story. We can kind of go down, we can look at the data in a different way. Now I also wanted to show you some ways that you can visualize data frames. Now many of the visualizations from statistics are built into the context menu for a data frame. If we go back here to the data frame, we can right click on it under visualization and see a number of different types of charts and graphs we can generate. One interesting one that we can use is the grid plot command. I've just prepared some code here. If I run this, and then we'll just zoom out a little bit. Here we can see is a grid of plots that correspond to the data series in our data frame. So here we can get a point plot, which is sepal length versus sepal width. Or if we go to this one, we have sepal length versus petal length. In the bottom half of our matrix here, we can see something that's referred to as a correlogram. So here we can see the correlation between variables. And we'll see if we go down here to our bottom one, pedal length versus pedal width, that this value is actually fairly high. So there's a rather good indication there's a high correlation between these two variables. If we look back at this point plot, we can also see that the points in this point plot are colored. And these are colored based on the three levels which are contained within the species data series. So this is just one of the many ways you can visualize data frames. There are many more visualizations built in to the statistics package. Now in closing, I wanted to mention a couple more details and examples that you can refer to. In Maple, you'll find the following resources are very good for covering uh, how to work with data series and data frames. First is the data frame guide, which gives a detailed list of many of the more popular operations supported by data frames. Next are the indexing pages for both data series and data frames. As well, you can get an overview of the data frame and data series constructors on their individual overview pages.
And lastly, there is an overview page for the statistics operations which can be applied to data frames.